Hey everyone, Anthony with Courage and Grow, and I wanted to just take a moment, it's actually gonna be a few minutes today, to talk about benchmarking a website, using a tool called GT Metrics to get some solid uh, information on how your site speed is performing. And yeah, we're going to use this free tool. It's called GT Metrics. So let me flip over here. And I'm in an incognito window right now just because in the main window, you'll see that I'm actually logged in. Um, so we're going to benchmark my main page just so you see without being logged in or anything. This is just a tool we'll use to see how the site is performing. So let me just drop in a URL, um, which is my main site and we're gonna let that run through GT Metrics. And this tool basically loads your page and times it so that you can see how it's performing. So sometimes when you're running a, an analysis, you're gonna get put in a queue if a bunch of people are using it, um, and sometimes you'll go right through. So gratefully, as for this video, I'm going right through, and the report's about to finish. And you'll see that um, my site is doing okay. All right, well, the first thing I'll say is these letters tend to scare the crap out of people. Um, they panic when they see these really low scores and these other things. Don't panic about those things. The important things, some of it's not even on the page right now, but the big things are this fully loaded time and this total page size. Those are ones you wanna pay attention to here. And then if you click over to the timings tab, um, you do need to be logged in. And so I'll show you that in a minute, but this is where one of the other important metrics or two of the other important metrics are gonna live. So um, let's actually flip over. You'll see that you know this is um, kind of the generic report. My page is loading in 4.7 seconds and I'm gonna reference here. I've got my, my metrics over here, but in general, that fully loaded time if you've got an average, or the average is between six and 10 seconds for desktop. Um, so if you're falling between six and 10, you're pretty good. If you're falling below six, you're very good. So right now, as my site was benchmarked, um, the main page of my website, I'm getting 4.7 seconds. Now I wanna check something in the waterfall report, which we're gonna look at in a minute. Uh, yeah, okay. So. Um, I looked to see if YouTube was down here. You'll see why in a minute. So let's actually kill out of the incognito tab and we're gonna flip over to where I'm logged in. Now, I very much recommend that you create an account. It's totally free. I do not pay for this. And you create an account and then you put in any pages that you'd like to track. You're able to monitor those pages so they're constantly being benchmarked on a regular basis. I think the free version gets you one a day. I don't remember. You can run them manually as many as you want. But um, if I click on this and then come over to history, I can see a chart as I'm monitoring just to see what's going on over time. Now, you'll see that in this case, the um, page was in general is loaded in seven seconds. There could have been the one I just ran, I've run it a couple of times, and there's a chance that the page was cached or something that it was bringing it up faster. But we're gonna look at this and see why it's loading in seven seconds um, and kind of dig into this a little bit. So now that I'm logged in, you'll see that I have access to this timings tab. And uh, there's these other pieces of information. One of the important metrics that you want to look at is this TTFB, which stands for time to first byte. It, it's a, a metric that indicates the performance of your hosting platform, right? So the time that it takes all the server stuff to actually load your anything uh, as the page loads. So you type in a URL, you hit enter, and the server has to do work to send that data to even start. And this is one that if this metric is kind of sucky, right, um, that's just an indicator that your hosting platform isn't great. So we're looking for an average, um, well, the average is about 1.25 seconds. Um, so anything below that and you're doing pretty good. So yes, my hosting platform is doing very well at 0.7 second time to first byte. I use SiteGround and I did a, a previous video and a previous email on why SiteGround is amazing. And you, this is one of the reasons the speed is very, very good. Um, I will put a link in the description to SiteGround if you're interested um, in looking at this platform. It is absolutely tremendous. And I will put a link also to the video that I did on SiteGround um, that'll explain why. Anyway, so let's move back into here. The next um, metric that I kind of look at is this contentful paint. What that means is um, when the site is loading, um, how much time does it take for something uh, what do they say? Like, uh, 
something that the user would recognize as the page being loaded loads, right? So some text loads, the images load, something loads on your site um, that would suggest that it's loading, right? It's not just sitting on a white screen waiting for it to load. That it, it, the contentful paint is a is another good metric to just kind of pay attention to how much time because that's about the amount of time that your page starts suggesting to the user that it's coming up. Um, and then the other metrics that I suggested were over here. Actually, they're up here anyway. The fully load time. This is when everything is loaded and there's nothing else waiting. And I believe the thing waits two seconds um, for everything to be loaded and then it you know subtracts that and gives you a, a number. Also your page size. This is important because if you're serving up a bunch of images or things like that, uh, this is where you can really overload your page and this is how you can slow things down. Three megabytes, you can see here as I hover over this arrow, that 2.95 meg, um, three megabytes is your target. You do not wanna be higher than that if you can avoid it. Um, so if you're at or below three, you're doing okay. The lower, the better. Uh, this is, just means less data, especially on mobile. That's where this becomes pretty important because things take longer to load on mobile, especially as mobile devices are using mobile data and not Wi-Fi. So what I want to do really briefly is dig into why this is seven seconds here. And I, I have studied this before, so I already know the answer, but I'm going to show you. I want to look at the waterfall report. This looks scarier than it is. And you can see a bunch of stuff here that's really okay. You're looking for anything outstanding, anything strange. And as I scan through this, I'm wondering why is this taking so long to load? Most of my content, you can see this red line pairs up with this onload, which kind of is a metric that suggests most of the stuff on the front end is loaded. Uh, it says it says right here, um, processing the pages complete and all the resources, images, CSS have finished downloading. So it means that there's just other scripts running in the background. The layman's version of what the onload is, is when your page is fully loaded visually, but scripts and things may still be running in the background. So I see 4.8 seconds, that's pretty good. Um, so I'm wondering, hmm, why is my page fully loaded in seven seconds, but it's onloaded like the user can use it in, in only 4.8. So that two extra seconds is actually pretty important. I'm gonna reference this for a second. Um, I have a report here from Google that states, you know what, I'm just gonna pull it up for you. Let's see if I can, this is unscripted, so I'm making this up as I go. <laughs> well, I'm making up the content. Um, the, what we're gonna talk about in the video. But this is what I wanted to show you. As page time, load time goes from one to three second, the probability of a bounce increases 32%. But these metrics are a little less important. I like to focus on this one to 10 seconds. As it goes up to 10 seconds, if your page takes 10 plus seconds to load, the probability of a bounce, meaning the user just saying, eh, screw it, and, and kick, uh, kicks out of there, increases 123%, that's huge. So if you're a business and your pages are loading in 10 plus seconds, you're losing traffic left, right, and center. You know, um, So you want to watch out for pages that are loading any longer than that. This is really not good. Um, so we'll come back to that other page in a second. Um, that's where these reports are helpful. So my onload time, this is a good indicator, but um, you know, it's probably okay for the user in about four to five seconds in this case, but seven seconds, you know, that you've got a 106% chance of, um, them bouncing out after six. So I want to look at that, right? Uh, that's not, not, not great. So let's, let's figure out why let's look at the waterfall report. And basically this is just all the stuff that your page loads and I'm looking for, all right, well, the content full or the onload time isn't the red line. And so we're going to look for the red is here. So this is pretty much where my site is fully loaded for a visitor. And now I'm going to look after it. And all of these kind of scripts are running in the background. And I'm wondering why? Well, it looks like YouTube is really kind of uh, playing a, a role there. And if you look at the page, I have this YouTube video, which is just an embed. Um, I just grabbed the code from YouTube and embedded it here, but that's actually slowing down the site. And you know, that could be a, a differentiator. If you're trying to get people on a landing page like this is, you got to decide, okay, well, is it worth keeping my bounce rate lower and keeping my time better? Um, so let's do this really fast. Um, well, let me do one other thing before I kill that video. I want to show you a different page. I'm going to come back to the home page, and I am going to benchmark. You can see I was testing other other pages here. Um, we're going to pick this page, but then I'm also going to 
add on ultimate checklist, which is a, a different page on the site. Um, it's a landing page that I have that's very straightforward. We're gonna analyze that, and hopefully I don't get stuck uh, in a queue behind users. Hopefully it's not too busy, but we're gonna analyze this page just to show you how um, a other page, another page on my same site on the same platform performs um, because I think this will give you a sense as to how these reports uh, can vary. So it's almost done. I'm gonna kind of vamping here. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, you can see this is phenomenal, right? Like these paid, these, these look good. Um, the fully load time is 2.6 seconds, which is incredibly fast. Um, the, the size is very fast. And then if I flip over to the timings, you'll see here, the onload time is very close to the fully loaded time. That is critical. You see my time to first byte is the same, which again, benchmarks my, my platform, which is SiteGround at 0.7 seconds. Very, very good. Um, but let's flip over to the waterfall and look at the red line very, very little is loading after the red line, right? The purple line is the fully load. Um, and it looks like some other things that uh, I've got, hmm, some icons seem to have loaded after. Uh, and then there's a, a Facebook thing that's loading a little bit late. Um, but overall, I mean, that little teeny bit, that 0.5 seconds, half a second is really not that big deal, big of a deal. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, but if I come back now that you've seen a, you know, a really quick, um, page, if I come back to the main one here where it benchmarked, this is about 18 hours ago, as it says, um, I'm curious about that YouTube video. What on earth is going on there? Why is it loading so much garbage and why is it taking an extra two seconds to load? So I've got the page here. I'm using Divi. Uh, the theme is Divi. I love it. That's another link I'll put in the video description. Um, I will do some stuff on Divi. And once that happens, I will try to remember to, <laughs> to put the link to my video on Divi. Um, but if you're not using Divi as your theme, it's amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the visual builder here. And I'm going to basically come in and just hide this video, right? I don't want it to show. And um, I'm doing a lot on my computer right now, so it's a little little laggy, but that's okay. Um, we're going to come under advanced, hit visibility, and disable on desktop phone, and our uh, phone, tablet, and desktop, and then save the page. And then what we'll see when we come back out of the visual builder, so this is actually loading the page for real, that video is gone. Okay, so now let's go back to GT Match. Actually, you know what? Let's pull um, an incognito window back up. This is the same report that I just ran. This is the one from before. It's probably cached, but let's retest this page. And you'll see that that fully load time should come down. I'm guessing it's gonna be closer to this. Um, you know, like I said, I think it was stuck in the cache and so it had already loaded things in the background. Whereas when it runs on the back end, I don't think the back end of GT Metrics, I don't think that's going on. Um, so we're gonna let this go and see how quickly it loads. Aha, oh man, what a difference, look at that. 3.1 seconds and the page is only 1.1 megs. Um, I honestly don't remember now, now that I'm thinking it out loud, what the page load size was. Oh, see, so the size isn't that much of a, a difference, like half half a meg. I mean, that is, out of three, that's, you know, that's a portion. Um, but in the waterfall now, you'll see that between the red and the purple lines, oh, there's only those couple little things. Those that icon and this Facebook um, deal right there. So this suggests to me that that YouTube video is taken up three to four seconds of load time. From a user perspective, the user's probably not gonna notice that because the page will be loaded and they'll be able to start engaging with it after the three to four seconds. But from a Google perspective, um, they might penalize a site. So my recommendation here is got to decide what your goal is. If your goal is SEO and getting your page to rank, maybe it's not a good idea to have that video there. Four seconds is a long time in the eyes of Google um, and getting your page to rank. A 3.1 second uh, site load time is significantly better than a seven second time. But if you're sending paid traffic or if you know it's a page on your site and the video is really important, then it might not be that important. If you're not concerned about organic traffic coming from a search engine, it might not be that important to take that video out of the page. Um, so it really depends on the content. Here, uh, this is a paid traffic page. I'm not looking for organic. So I'm actually gonna turn it back on. To do that, I'm just undoing using the keyboard shortcut Control Z um, in Divi and then saving it. So it's un undone that. Um, that uh, visibility change. And 
yeah, so I'm going to leave it. Another option that you would have is to basically screenshot this right here um, and then just put that image right there and link it externally. So you set it up to link probably in a new tab to the video and that's another option to, to still have the video there but they would have to load it um, in YouTube. So that's how you read these reports. Um, you know, those are the metrics you're looking for. Overall, just a quick recap. You want to look at fully load time, total page size, and then under timings, time to first bite. Those are incredibly important. And then ultimately, your onload time is, is really important as well. And then if there's a big gap between the onload, the red, and the fully load, the purple, um, that's an important metric to pay attention to. So this is an incredibly helpful tool. It'll help you diagnose your pages. If you've got a lot of images and things, it'll help you see that. Um, one other quick tip I wanna show you. You see this here where it's yelling at me for not serving scaled images. If you click the drop down, it will show you what images it's, it's uh, complaining about. And it will tell you right here, I've got in this case, all right, I've got a headshot of myself, right? Um, and it's currently set to 500 by 500, but it's displaying at 248 by 248, right? So that means that I'm basically telling the browser is having to shrink down that image. This will tell you which ones to change. Now I'm getting an F here, which is part of the reason why my scores are so low. I really don't care, right? Look at the tiny little bit of data, right? In some of these cases, that one is, is pretty significant, 230K. So I could fix that one, but these others, 20k reduction right uh not 16k reduction 5k i'm not bugging out about those i'm gonna leave those i don't care about saving 50 kilobytes and having to go in and resize four or five images but if you're a photographer if you've got big images on your homepage, things like that this is an incredibly important report because you might be saving megabytes of data and remember three megabytes is your cap so if your site if your page is loading more than that you got to fix those so uh, if you have any questions about this, I'd love you to shoot me an email, hello at courageandgrow.com um, or drop a comment uh, or respond to the email. If it came in an email to you, I'd love to hear from you and we can get a conversation going about this. If you have any questions, um, you know, send me your link. I can take a look at the report for you, any of that. Um, but I hope that this has been helpful. And I think that uh, now that you've got a little bit of insight into how to benchmark your site, you'll definitely be on the way to having a more strong, robust, and speedy website. All right. Thanks very much. Cheers for now.